Good morning. It is the 28th of June, and we gather together in this place. We gather together with people from London, Ontario, Southwestern Ontario, from the United States, from England, from Australia, and together we gather, we are connected in faith, we are connected in love, and so we praise God. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Lord God, how wonderful is your name in all the earth. From north and south, from east and west, drawn by your love, we are gathered in ways we could never have imagined to worship you, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. For the gift of this new day, fresh from your hand, we thank you. For the renewal and strength we discover through our friendship in Christ, we thank you. For the Spirit's energy, blessing us in each moment of life, whether joyous or difficult, we thank you. Lord God, we know that all of life is your gift. So give us glimpses of your splendor, glory, and love in this time of worship and in all the moments of our lives. Accept our praise, Lord God, Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit. Amen. What is God like? Joseph lay down on his mat and asked, Mother, what's God like? Rebecca stopped her work and turned to her son. What is God like? She responded. Why do you ask that? Perhaps you should speak to one of the men at the temple. Joseph turned his big brown eyes on Rebecca. She called him Mr. Brown Eyes. I heard a man at the market today. He was calling out, Repent, repent, or God will strike you dead. It made me wonder what God is like, the one that we worship. Rebecca sat down beside her child and listened to the silence of the night for several long moments. Well, God is bigger than we can imagine or understand, but I do know this. The Holy One of Israel is to be loved and feared and honored. I may not know everything about the Torah and its teachings, but I know that we must always honor God in our thoughts and actions and words. I know that, Mother, but what do you think God is like? Is he like the God the man was talking about? Will he kill us if we mess up? Is God mean? Oh, Joseph, I don't know. I'm your mother, not a priest or a scholar. Rebecca was quiet thinking about Joseph's questions. I guess when I think about God, may his name be blessed, I think about my mother and how gentle she was with her children. But how can you think about God like a mother? Joseph asked incredulously. Surely God must be strong like a king or a soldier. Yes, God is strong like a king or a soldier. But to me, God is also loving and gentle and caring like a mother. God gives us what we need to eat and drink. God gives us clothes to wear and a beautiful world to live in. When I remember my mother nursing my little brother, I think that God must be like that, full of everything we need and giving it to us in the kindest, gentlest, most loving way that we can receive. Can you see that, Joseph? Can you see a God like that? It's like, Joseph said, Sometimes I still want to sit in your lap and have you hug me. I'm not a baby anymore, but somehow I feel safe when you hold me. Do you think he wants to keep us safe? I think that the Holy One wants every good thing for us, 
like a mother or father would want for their children. I think that God treats us like a parent does, feeding us when we are hungry and carrying us when we are too tired to walk on our own. And I think that God delights in us. Do you remember when you were little and I would bounce you on my knee? Joseph smiled. I would laugh and want you to do it again and again. And I would laugh too, Rebecca answered. I felt such joy because of you. I think God feels that joy because of us. Rebecca leaned over Mr. Brown eyes and kissed him on the forehead. I think that God comforts us just the way a mother comforts her child. What does comfort mean, mother? Joseph asked. Do you remember when you were sick and I stayed up all night with you? I washed your face with cool water and I held you when you woke up crying. That was comforting. Or when you hurt yourself and come to me, I comfort you by washing your scrapes and stroking your head. That's what God does for us when we are hurting or afraid. God soothes us when we are sad. He cares for our hurts and our pains, and he is with us when we are afraid. And that, my son, is what I think God is like. Joseph snuggled into his blankets and wearily sighed. I think I can feel the Holy One tucking me in right now. Rebecca sat by her son until he fell asleep. She asked God to watch over Mr. Brown Eyes during the night and then went back to her work because, as they are quick to tell us, a mother's work is never done. We pray the collect for today, welcoming God. Make us apostles of your generous love so that we might offer hospitality that challenges the world with your gift of eternal life. Made known in Jesus Christ, who offered himself for us. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 28 beginning at verse 5. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the words of that prophet come true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together we say the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, 
It is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. The Gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So, how are you doing today? Are any of you discouraged? Any of you a little grumpy? Any of you fretting about the future? Anyone worrying about how much of this stuff that's going on around us, you're gonna be able to cope with. Anyone feeling a little cut off and lonely? Well, for me, I think the answer would be all of the above. For any of you who might be like me, I believe this gospel just might have something to say to us today. For those of you who aren't feeling those things, you can listen in any way because these are mountains we all have to climb at some point or another. As our gospel, uh, as our gospel story today began, life for Jesus had, had gotten crazy. It had absolutely gotten crazy. The pressures, the demands on his time the expectations that people had of him, they, they had all been ratcheted up. It, it was as if everybody wanted a piece of him. And, and the squabbles, the ongoing squabbles that he had with the power brokers, the religious institutions, the elites, they had gone to a whole new level. And, and to make matters worse, he was on his way to Jerusalem and, and he had a very, very clear vision of how all of that was gonna end up. And he just needed to get away from it all. He just needed some time away. And so he took Peter and James and John, probably his three closest friends in the world. And the four of them climbed to the top of Mount Tabor. Uh, now, they, they went there not for the view. The view is pretty spectacular. It's not why they went. They didn't go there for the exercise. Going up Mount Tabor is not exactly like climbing Mount Everest. They went there because Jesus had a need just to be, a need to pray. And, and I've told you before that, that in scriptures, Old Testament and, and New Testament, mountains are, are thin places. They are places where time and eternity brush up against one another. They're places where heaven and earth seem to share the same time and space. And they're places, they're places where God is encountered. Okay, so Jesus goes to the top of Mount Tabor, to this thin place, and, and he is carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders. He is carrying the future of humanity on his shoulders. And when he looks in the mirror, he sees death. With that on his mind, with that on his heart, in that sacred place, 
He hears the voice of God. He hears the voice of his father say, this is my son, my chosen. This is my son, my chosen. Jesus went to the top of Mount Tabor, not because it was a must-see tourist place, but because he needed to rest in the awareness, the overwhelming awareness that he was loved by God, that he mattered to God, that his ministry mattered to God, that his life mattered to God, that his death would matter to God. That affirmation of relationship that affirmation of love, this is my son, my chosen, would give him the resolve and the courage and the strength to face all that was to come. And in a way, I think it can do that for you and for me. In your baptism, you were declared a child of God. You were marked with a cross and claimed as Christ's own forever. Now, most of us don't think about that a lot. It's not so much that we ignore it, but when life is good and everything is rosy, it's not the first thing we think about over our cereal in the morning. But there are moments, there are moments when we would do well to remind ourselves. When life gets out of control, when everyone wants a piece of us, when nothing makes sense. We need to remember, you're a child of God. I'm a child of God. We matter. We are loved by God. We need to hold on to that love. Will it change everything? No. God, I wish it would. But it can help us find resolve and courage and strength. As a grandparent, like so many, I'm watching that understanding, that learning about the power of love in my grandchildren lying in liberty. And it's a scene that's worked out in homes all over the world where where mums kiss away hurts and tears, where the loving presence of dad chases away nightmares and banishes the monsters that are under the bed. Resolve and courage and strength grow. You can see it in their faces. You can see it in who they are. Love takes hold in a beautiful and wonderful way. Well, when children grow up, the hurts become more serious and the threats, they, they become very real. And he, she, we find ourselves looking for something, anything that will give us security, anything that will help us to endure and get through. At those moments when life closes in, when it feels like breathing is an impossibility, remember, you're a child of God. You're loved by God. You matter to God. But listen, 
Our, our story, it's about more than parental affirmation in love. See, we are allowed, we are invited to see an encounter, a conversation that takes place between Moses and Elijah and Jesus. And, and this conversation, they're just not catching up on old times. They're not catching up on the news. They're talking about the soon to happen departure, the exodus of, of Jesus. And, and listen, think about it. Moses, Elijah, Jesus. Moses, exodus out of Egypt, set God's people free. Jesus, exodus is going to set the whole world free. According to scripture, Elijah was taken up into heaven. After Jesus conquers death, he's going to ascend into heaven. These aren't coincidences. These are our connections. Jesus is on his way to face betrayal and suffering and a cruel death. And along the way, he was going to watch his friends disappear one by one by one. But he would not die alone. He would not be alone because he was connected to a stream of life that spanned the ages and bridged the barrier of death. That, that didn't make a lot of sense to me until a year ago when I climbed to the top of Mount Tabor. Well, actually, that's a bit of an exaggeration. A tourist bus took me up there. But I went to the top of Mount Tabor and to the top of Mount Nebo. Mount Nebo is the place where Moses saw the promised land before he died. And for me, both of those places, I understood when I was there what it meant for them to be thin places. I, I felt what it meant to have time and eternity brush up against one another. I felt the interaction, the intersection between yesterday and, and today. I felt connected. I felt connected. Some of you may have heard the recording, Unforgettable, where Natalie Cole is paired with her dead father. And through the miracles of, of digital, digital recording, together they sing a haunting duet that bridges the barrier of death. Well, today, today, you and I, we, we, through the magic of the internet, we are connected. We are connected to one another through the internet, through our faith, and through love. And that's a wonderful thing. But I want you to imagine, to imagine for just a moment, imagine your life as singing in concert with those who have gone before you. In turmoil, in worry, in fear, in heartache, in pain, and in death, they are your companions. You are not alone. Not now, not ever. So, how are you feeling today? Any of you discouraged? Any of you grumpy? Anyone fretting about the future? Anyone worried how much of this stuff you're going to be able to put up with? Any of you feeling cut off? Lonely. Remember, 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 you are a child of God. 
You are loved by God. You matter to God. And remember, you are not alone. You have connections. Amen. Together we say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us pray. Lord God of heaven and earth, with joy and thanksgiving we praise you, for you create, sustain, and redeem all things. For making us in your image to love one another and to care for your creation, we give you thanks. For the gift of your Son, whose life is the pattern for our lives and learning, we give you thanks for the energy of your Spirit to inspire us in times of challenge and change, we give you thanks. Strengthen us in these difficult days to show your love to others as we pray for the Church and those who lead it as we adapt to new ways of worshipping and being together. Lord, in your love, for creation that we may learn to reverence and care for it. Lord, in your love. For those who lead the nations of the world, that they may work for the well-being of the most vulnerable. Lord, in your love. For those who serve as teachers, healers, and caregivers in these stressful days when their work is so demanding. Lord, in your love. 
for the poor, the homeless, the hungry, and all whose livelihoods have been disrupted during the pandemic. Lord, in your love. For those who are ill or struggling in isolation, and for those who mourn the loss of someone dear, Lord, in your love. For the powerless and the oppressed in all places, and for those who work to defend them. Lord, in your love. Hear us now as we pray in silence for situations on our hearts this day. Lord, in your love. God eternal, keep us in communion with your people across all times and in all places. May we serve you faithfully, blessing others as we have been blessed by your love through your Son, Jesus Christ. Now joining our prayers and praises together, we pray in the words that Jesus taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, and those whom you love and pray for today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen.